Good morning, traders. Let's get ready to rumble. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Those words have been dancing around my head all night. Oh, it's Vegas law, that phrase. Kiana. Fisher. Joy. Joe. Cards drawn are the past, ones to come are future. And the best part, it's beatable. morning traders i hope you guys are ready to trade right here on benzinga tv let's start it off with a good like and bring on my man today ryan faluna in the house aren't you at the office man i am man i am in the benzinga hq it is spectacular we're having a great time really excited for this morning Hey, like always, uh, Ryan tries to go to the office because it's that good of an experience to be around the builders. I know how it's been. And, and when I was there, I definitely looked around and had that feeling like, yeah, you know what? I think I'm at the right place. I see everybody working. And, and a lot of times when you're at a headquarters, what do you see? A lot of the time you'll you'll see something that probably disappoints you versus pumps you up, gives you that motivation that, hey, I do work hard. I do work hard at home. Maybe no one can see me in my left or right shoulder, but I, I do put in the time and I know Ryan does the same thing. So yes, appreciate sir. you and checking out the office, man. And, That's what and it's I'll, about. I'll, tell, I'll tell you, Mitch, when you come here, you can really feel that the team environment and the team effort allows us to achieve the things that we achieve. There's just no way we'd be able to do it without the team. And coming to the office literally puts you in the middle of that experience. Uh, it's It's awesome. I definitely we got we got to show this on on on, on a recap for the the company too because they they if they haven't already done so they definitely need to check out the headquarters yeah for sure let's go ahead and take a look at the overall markets ryan the chop fest is real out there i i don't know if you've gotten uh some chop fest or in, in your trading but i definitely have seen it out there uh let's take a look here at the overall market the spy did bounce up there with the job numbers it first went down then it went up then went down, then went up, then went down. Now, now, now we're looking like we're coming down here. So it, it's really a choppy market right now between, I would say, 43, uh, 438.50s and 440s. That's kind of the levels that I'm looking to see what's going to happen here. Uh, but what are you thinking? It's been that type of market out there. Yeah, I'm thinking the exact same thing, Mitch. It's been very, very difficult in terms of swing trading, which is really my bread and butter, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I do day trade. I enjoy day trading. It's fun. But my bread and butter is going to be swing trading, finding things that uh, are undervalued and have and have tremendous catalysts. And it's been very, very tough with the back and forth that you're talking about. And I think one of the things that's important to recognize as a trader is when the market's not giving you what you want, um, your job is not to fight that. It's to play what the market is giving you. And in some cases in a choppy market like this, some day trades, um, sometimes we refer to them as plate liquor trades because they're they're obviously smaller. This is where it's at. This is what's working. So that's what we're going to keep hitting. Um, so I, I'm, I'm totally in agreement with you. It's been really, really choppy. I've actually put on no new swings in, in a number of weeks here. All right. Just like I don't miss the market opens, I won't be missing the Christmas tree this year, Julie. <laughs> got to have the Christmas tree. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's see what we got out there. What stocks are moving? I will bring up a stock that I, I'm already in, guys. Yesterday, I did get into the bros. was looking to add to it. So uh, I don't know if you got to see my research, Ryan. If you didn't get a chance, maybe after you check out pre-market prep, I brought in depth research today to pre-market prep boots on the ground i actually went to a dutch bros coffee as you guys can see here whoa uh, I, I went for it and, and and i took the shot and i i took the stock so i went and bought the coffee right so we'll see what happens today already trading up at 437 uh 40 43 78 there on the ask big spread 
So just be careful with the stock like this. Now that I will definitely put out there. But I got in yesterday right at that 43 mark. We'll see if we can continue moving on up today and get that next lift. That was uh, actually a really good entry looking at that chart. Good job for, for hitting that. Let me ask you, is mm -hmm. this coffee the best coffee you've ever had? Is it for real or is it? The hype is, I'll tell you that. <laughs> the hype is for real. Love the it. hype is for real. <laughs> and I think that's all you need to know, right? I yes, mean, sir. Yes, if sir. the hype is for real then maybe the stock can start really ramping. And one thing that we definitely did see on this stock is a ramp right out the IPO. And if you remember, I think for a while there, uh, Luckin Coffee was really thought that it was going to compete with Starbucks, right, Ryan? I mean, I there mean, was a time. They, they might have thought that. I don't they, know how they, many other people actually thought that. I, I, I mean, certainly didn't. There, there, was, right. there was talks about it, at least, because, I mean, we were getting – lies out of china but i mean the truth is what they were giving us was looking towards that direction this is my idea does bros really start taking the market share here underneath starbucks that's what i'm going to be wondering in the next couple of years and that's why i took my shot here in bros and another thing that i think could happen is it could become a meme stock but let's go ahead and let's tr transition out of this. Let's get into stocks that you guys want to watch out there in the chat. Let me know in the chat if you guys have a particular stock that's sticking out to you. Yes, a lot of us do more swing trading because, I mean, like Ryan and I, we can we can watch the market maybe at the open, but we're not probably going to watch the market every tick of the day. Uh, we just don't have that time. But what we try to do is mix in a little bit of day trading, swing trading, sometimes holding a day trade to yep. a swing trade. I know I do that. I'm pretty sure you do that also, Ryan. Yeah. So actually interesting uh, that you bring that up. I actually don't like doing that, right? I think it's, it's ah. part of discipline. Well, here's the thing. I, I'm a big, big preacher of discipline. You're going to okay. hear me talk about discipline all of the time. And a lot of the times, if you have a day trade and then it all of a sudden turns into a swing trade, that means that you didn't follow your plan at some point. And, and you were undisciplined. Now, this actually happened to me yesterday, but I, I have a good reason for that. So one of the stocks, uh, Mitch, if you'd pull up my screen here real quick, I'll show you what's going on here. Yeah, let's do one, it. One of the stocks that I was trying to hit on a day trade yesterday is DOGS, D-O-G-Z, all right? And it's this 324 spot. Now, this is this was a day trade that was, you know, totally off the strategy that I, we've talked about quite a bit, right? We're looking for level two, we're looking for volume, uh, we're looking for a little bit of a pop, and then we're going to scalp this. This stock stopped at 324 yesterday and sat there for pretty much all day. And, and I was waiting for it to pop over and break so that I could close the trade, but it never happened. Now, throughout the rest of the afternoon, it barely even pulled back. Let me go to a one minute chart and actually show you what I'm looking at. Right. So right in here, this spot right here had a ton of sellers on the level two. And I've seen this before that when that gets taken out, especially on volume, the stock will actually pop and give you a trade. The day before we had some pretty big volume. And then two days before that, we had a nice big candle that kind of set the stage for this. So while I was waiting for this to actually pop, it never materialized. But you'll notice here that it barely even pulled back. And when, when it did pull back, it would actually get bought right back up. So I said to myself, you know, I think that this actually might try to take this spot out tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this position overnight. I, I don't think there I'm in any danger of a capital raise. I don't think that the stock is going to get halted. I had no indication that that's the case. So I said, I'm going I'm to try to hold this uh, overnight. Now, if you zoom in here, you'll notice that in the, in the after hour session, this thing actually popped. I have a high here of 338 on my screen. Now, I wasn't offering in the after hour session, and I was actually stepping away from the computer because I was going to do something with my teammates here in the office. But I came back to my computer and I saw this and I said, aha, ha, something's going to happen tomorrow. I'm actually glad I held this over. Now, if I'm looking at it this morning, it looks like we actually popped in the pre-market too. Got near 3.30 here in the pre-market. So, uh, Mitch, I'm with you. Um, I, I, I don't like having a day trade turn into a swing trade. And I'll be totally honest with dogs here. Uh, I'm looking to close this today. I am not going to hold this over the weekend. Um, but in, in this particular case, I, I felt like I was pretty protected. My plan here was to break the 324 spot. The pullbacks on here were not big enough for me to actually stop out. So I'm still in this trade. So I don't like doing this. It's kind of a rarity that I do this normally when I open up a day trade that I know is a day trade. I'm going to close it right away. Didn't happen here today, but we're going to see what happens this morning. 
I'll tell you what, we're definitely paying attention to the chat there. Scott Harrison talking about he would love to see some more swing trading as opposed to day trading. Yep. That's what this show is really all about. I mean, at the end of the yep. day, what we tried to do was bring a little bit of Zunaid. You guys see him taking some YOLO options. You mm -hmm. guys see Ryan mixing it up there, sometimes going with stocks, sometimes going with options. Um, and then, of course, myself is way more of a swing trader than a day trader. I used to do more day trading. And I try to knock out maybe a day trade or two here, but really I swing trade all the time, guys. That's what I do. Um, if you guys haven't come to Money Mitch, that's you, you'll hear it all the time. I'm in a position looking for the swing for the next day or the two-day move or looking for my 20% mover. And a lot of that is, is going to be based off of sector and industry analysis. So stick around, Scott. I'm sure you'll have something for everyone on this show. And that's yeah. what it's really all about. Let's go ahead. Let's keep going. Looks like Matt, uh, Matt Miller talking about Ford in the chat. I know that we had a, a great day out of Ford and GM yesterday. Uh, so let's, get, let's take a look here. He wanted to see if Ford could break 15 today. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the daily list. Um, at least from my look, what I would look for more is a pullback, at least holding towards 1465. So that's kind of like the prior resistance becoming support. You've seen it spike over this level multiple times. So I would look actually for a little bit of a pullback and then a rip out. But can it get through 15 today? Yes, it has the resistance right above it. But remember, it already just made a move in about two days up here, which is about 7.8%. So you could get a little bit of a retracement, let's say down towards uh, this 5%. So you're talking about a 2 or 3% retracement, then a pushback through that 15. That's what I would be looking for and forward. But definitely the level is right above it. So it could break out through that 15 uh, real quick, let me just address Duncan Davin here. Hey guys, just a report on my trade. I just sold my 50 calls on apps with a 500% profit, biggest profit percentage I've ever had. Thanks to Ryan for educating me on options. You rock. Uh, Duncan Dave, I really appreciate those kind words. That's really awesome. That's actually some of the most gratifying things that other human beings tell me. But the reality is, is you push those buttons. You did that. I, I mm -hmm. might have directed you to an option site to further your education, but at the end of the day, as it is with every trader, I can't push the buttons for you. And in fact, nobody else can do that. So when you make a big trade like this, understand you did that. That was your work. Congratulations. Uh, get yourself something nice. And, and most importantly, make sure you don't give all those profits back. Way to go. Yeah, Dave. like like always, it's just about finding process from us. That's one thing that we can see and we clearly see it because we are around the trading environment ourselves and around other traders. So we definitely have seen how the process uh, attempt works. And really, when, when you go ahead and you start seeing those results, that's that that. Give yourself that pat on the back execution yep. on point because that's really what it's all about in trading once you get that execution on point you start realizing that if i can just execute i more than likely can get into the right probability and and that's really what we're all after guys just probability this game is just a waves type of game solar Let's solar up just he's just clowning me right now you push my buttons right <laughs> Good stuff. I, I love it I, I absolutely love it um real quick the crypto mining show said ford said they're shutting down mexico plant for a few days for lack of parts uh and in parentheses chips you know we were just talking about swing trading and one of the mm -hmm. reasons why we're we're not having new swings this is actually one of the things that's worrying me right now uh I, you know not only can they not get chips to create new cars but there's also talk that you know uh, some of the things that you order for Christmas like gifts might be delayed or simply not available. Um, obviously, last year I was knee deep in some of the shortage when I was trying to get a graphics card for my new computer build. That's actually still difficult to get. So as far until we actually like get this figured out, I think this is one of the big things that's kind of stopping the market from taking the next leg up and get putting us in an environment where swings are going to work. So um, this is actually some of the news that I'm paying attention to. I hope that it's over soon. I'm just not optimistic that that's the case. All right, catching up with the chat. I know that there was mention there uh, what's going on with Ren. I'm trying to see if we have any news for it right now. It's up about 20% in pre-market. 
not seeing anything in the in uh, our feed here. Uh, looks like it's probably just a runner right now. I'll let you guys know if I do see anything, but definitely super extended here uh, towards the 21, but we'll see if we can get through that level right out the gates. I would look for a pullback underneath 19 on this one, closer towards 1850 or 1845, and then looking for it to come right back up through that 20. You're talking about a very high volatile name, so just be careful out there and we'll see what happens in R E E R E N N uh, Ren. We'll see yeah, I don't see, there. I don't see any news for that either. Uh, this might be a room play. Um, some, some pretty uh, big volume for the extended session this morning. I want to wait and see uh, what the volume's like when this opens up. I, so I actually wouldn't go after this here in the pre-market. Um, going along with your theme with the chat here, I see uh, we had SNDL uh, being mentioned. This is of course Sundial. This thing has been, back and forth. Uh, Sundial Grower shares are trading higher if the company announced it will acquire Alcana. Uh, I'm okay. not sure. Uh, do you, are you, do you have any edge on that, Mitch? I'm, I'm not, I'm not familiar with Alcana. I don't well, know if this actually moves the needle or not. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just going to move the needle because this stock yeah. is one of those stocks that already is trying to move the needles, right? Yeah. Uh, yesterday you're, you're getting it to pop towards the 80. Look for that pop to go through 80s. This stock loves to go through that $1 price point and then come right back down through it. Um, that's what I would be looking for today. You're only 25 cents away and you could have a dollar magnet today in Sundial. But one thing that could give you some signs is look for some reversals in stocks like CGC and stocks like TLRY. Yeah. If you could see those have a strong day, then that could give you signs that, hey, let me keep an eye out on Sundial because I feel like the momentum will be in Sundial. And of course, you could see reversals in these cannabis stocks kind of lead you to seeing the industry change and then going after that sundial. It's not a bad play to keep it on radar. I'll keep it on watch. Who knows? Maybe I'll trade it up to a dollar. Um, that's what I would personally do. I, I With these dollar magnets, I usually try to get them underneath 90 cents, and I'm selling it right at 99 cents. I don't even sell it at a dollar. I yeah. sell it right underneath it at 99 cents because if it ticks on the dollar, I don't want to be one of those people that got left out at at one dollar, I'm gonna put 99 cents, and hopefully that got my out there, and I can take my pop fill. Yeah, sometimes I do the same thing. If there's a if there's a big uh, like round number that I know there's gonna be a battle at, uh, I'll I'll kind of jump in front of that. And, and yeah, you you, you want to get out before the battle happens, right? Because the next thing you know, right. you can get left watching it, and then being like, oh man, I could have got out there. I had the shot. I just got a little greedy for like maybe two or three cents. Even 10 cents sometimes is not worth it if, it, if it's going to come right back down to you. It happened to me in OSTK recently, and I'm looking to get right back into this name. Um, I actually got stopped out of this name on Wednesday, Ryan, on this candle when it leaked through. I wanted to hold oh. towards that bottom right here, um, and I got in on this day, and it just leaked through that low, which was – 7350 and this is why it's so important sometimes to pay attention to what your closing price versus what the intraday action is uh the intraday action definitely stopped me out on ostk but look how it's recovered i'm looking for this stock to get strong uh i, I think with the supply chain issues that you've been hearing stocks like this there's going to be certain retail winners i feel and some of those that i'm calling out are bigger plays like uh ostk wayfair uh walmart I could see doing well um, just because, yeah, there's supply chain issues, but the biggest companies usually have the sh strongest supply yeah. chains, right? And so if there's anyone that's going to survive the supply chain's battles, it's going to be the bigger companies that can really put the gas on their providers and be like, hey, you know who we are, right? So <laughs> you better get those toys over to us first. Yeah versus going towards the mom and pop stores and, and, and they, they kind of also approach. have the resources to kind of wait that out if they need to they don't necessarily need to react to near-term blips like that exactly. um you know one of the things that you were what was that ostk i think that last mm -hmm. stock that you had yeah, pulled up there um, yeah overstock so so a couple of things here so this is you're actually identifying one of the reasons why i use mental stops sometimes right mm -hmm. because that action stopped you out when you were when you were looking at it and you know it's tough. I don't. I don't necessarily want to advise this to other people because you know if you don't have a plan, uh, if you don't have that feel for it, 
um, mental stops can actually get you in trouble, right? Oftentimes your first stop is your best stop. But this is a, a, a really good example of why in some cases we use some of those mental stops. And if you go back to your daily chart there, Mitch, you had a number of that, you had a, those spots being hit on that trend line. Let me tell mm -hmm. you something, when that pops, when that stock pops over that trend line, that is going to be an ideal swing candidate because you're going to be able to swing long, I think, for probably a couple of weeks, and you're going to get some good movement out of that. Yeah, I've played this one multiple times uh, to, the, to that level, and I've sold uh, in this time back in early, early Jan. I grabbed this one, and I was able to sell it up towards 90. I didn't sell it at 100. Each time it was like a little bit underneath the trend line, but I was looking for that move towards the trend line. We'll see what happens in this stock. Uh, let's keep going to some other ones. I did see grow, go off the ground, uh, reversal there. Uh, looks like CCXI being mentioned in the chat. Uh, this one's a major mover of the day. Uh, looks like what looks like they got approval for an FDA drug. Uh, multiple resistance right above it. I'm gonna see if it gets through this resistance. Look how it's just look how there's 3748. There's three tries to it already in the pre-market. So there's the first push, there's the second push, and now a third push. I would be okay with a pullback to VWAP, but you don't want to see it break through that support of 3350s. And I would like to see it right back through that 3748, looking strong with some volume out the gates. It's okay if we get a pullback right out the gates, but I wouldn't want to see it break through, let's say, 33 on the downside. It, we'd want to see a quick move down, quick move right back up. All right, let's go ahead. S bet. SBET being talked in the chat, Sharp Link Gaming. This is the cheaper stock, but I, I don't mind yeah. going through them if you guys mention it in the chat. I mean, of course, I, I don't know too much exactly on Sharp Link Gaming here, but I can tell you I would use more of a weekly look to start seeing that it is on support. But one thing that you can clearly see is that it was driving, right? It was doing some drives, 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 and then it came back down. And it tried to drive here. It gave a really strong bullish candle. But then what happened with this candle? It came right back down below that. That to me is a, is a bearish sign that it doesn't want to hold the positive momentum above seven. If it doesn't get back above seven, I personally wouldn't even be trading this name here. All right. Sorry. Looking at the, looking at the open here. Got my scanners going. Uh, obviously, CCXI hitting that. Um, just kind of looking around. Don't necessarily see anything yet. Um, let me take a look at the broader market here. <laughs> my brain, my Not brain's flat. two to three seconds slow, man. Mental stops don't work for me, said the postman. I, I can't blame you. You know what I do in that situation? I, I, I do a lot of, uh, I don't put stops, like clear stops in, but sometimes I'll do stop limits. Um, and when I do stop limits, it's usually going to be under a clear level. So let's say if the level here was 422, I'd probably put my stop at like 418. A couple cents below it, I'm okay with it hitting if it does hit. If it does get down there, we broke through the level, I want to get out. And, and that's what I tell myself, uh, especially if I need to just like put an order that can go ahead and execute on its own. Usually it's going to be a stop with a limit order three to four cents away from that. Looks All like right. a Grom popping out of the open here. Um, did see that that Oatly is really kind of trading out of the open here. They got an upgrade by JP Morgan, yes. uh, which is which is why you, that, is, you're seeing that pop there. Good momentum in Oatly, though. Good volume as well. Uh, I will let you know, uh, Ryan. So Oatly, actually, their CEO two days ago went on uh, Bloomberg saying that, yes, their shortages were starting to go ahead and catch up and their factories shouldn't be seeing shortages shortly. So that that's another thing, a positive, you know, why I think the analyst came in, Ryan, was off of that. I think he came in and stepped in. Okay. Okay. That's, that's good context for there. I actually didn't have that, but it looks strong There's out of the gate. VWAP. It looks like a little bit of a pullback. Ooh, there. I like that VWAP trade right there. Um, so let's see if it ticks slightly below 580s for a second here, and then comes right back through 16. I want to see it go to 1575 and then right back up through 1590s. 
let's see if that materializes you know i'm, I'm looking at here aehr too this thing has been in an absolute Oof. monster run um and actually shout out to andrew weiss one of our teammates here he nailed this uh he's nice. been in this since like i think six or something like that just absolutely wonderful trade uh but this thing also strong out of the gate here so no position here this is a little extended for my taste but uh this you know there, there might be some opportunity to scalp here uh dogz looks like we're on 330 here so uh i'm going to be looking to close this we get a pop here we clear this out let me just let me take a look at this got kind of got to focus and make sure looks like we're taking out the big seller here at 330. yeah i just uh, and basically when i'm watching this i'm actually why help here let me bring it up on the screen here i'm basically watching the level two and i'm watching the time and sales and i can see here that it's just just floods and floods of buys there's a ton and, there, and there's a huge seller here so i really want to see this uh get taken out we'll see we shall see oh here let me I, let me get slack turned off here there we go uh, they're trying they're trying on dogz so if we zoom in here i don't have level two to show you on the screen but basically if you just take a look at the level two you can see exactly what's going on and we're actually getting what looks like a refresh seller here which is uh <laughs> <laughs> spencer of course he wants to know that hell no is my answer hell no uh postman talking about he uses his rsi indicator to play stops as well that's not a bad thing uh, the only thing that happens with rsi sometimes it's lagging that's the only thing i would talk about with rsi yeah but doesn't mean you're incorrect in doing so just trying to put it yeah, put that out there all right i'm gonna take a shot here uh let's do oatly all right, so what are you doing? How, what what uh, shot are you taking? All right, I'm long here. Let's do it, guys. 1575s. I just got to fill on that pop back there. I wanted to see it hold that 1560 at least for a second there. Uh, really, 1550s will get me out. Uh, so 1549, you'll see me just drop out. Uh, but if we can get it back above 16, I'll look for that extension up through that 16 high that we have here, which is 1613. Let's see if we can get it back through that level right now. And what was your stop? I think you might have told me, but I, I forgot. What was the, what's the stop on this trade? Fifteen fifty. Gotcha. We we when we see that close at fifteen sixty, right? And then we see it go sideways there. It's okay if it like wicks through like fifteen fifty five, but you don't want to see a close underneath that fifteen fifty. That would just start a downtrend, and and that's what I definitely don't want to see. Yeah. So you see this? There's another support here, on the fifteen at that 1550 which was a prior resistance right right here in this earlier time 4 a.m it got above it held it got above it held it that's what you want to see you don't want to see it get into that 1550 area because if it does it can crack down to 1525 I definitely don't want to be around for that. Yeah, I, I'd get out too. I don't want to stick around for that. You can. That's the thing. You can always rebuy if it resets up later in the day too, right? So why force yourself to go through that by holding it? You know, I, I, I wouldn't do that either. I would do the same thing. So we're in right about here and we're risk and I'm going to draw it out. I like doing this also for traders that are brand new and let me get ready just in case I got to get out. All right. Got it ready here. Um, so when traders are new, a lot of the times I like to draw out the trade for yourself and give yourself a visualization of what you're expecting to see so that if things go against you or for in your direction, you almost painted the picture. And so that's what I use these boxes for a lot of the times. And I want to see how's my risk to return? How's this box compared to this box? Is this box bigger? Always needs to be bigger. We want to be getting more reward than we're risking, right? And so that's why I also draw it out for a kind of a geometrical representation of your profit to loss ratio. So it looks like we're right on 1551 here. So yeah, like we, we, we're, we're, we're spreading out. Do you see the spread going right there? Right now, I'm about to get out on the bid. Boom. There it is. Yep. Sharp, a really, really, really sharp pull there on Opley. And I'm, I'm still waiting on Ooh, DOGZ. That took a second there, but I got out. 1550s, I, I got out. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, and so on DOGZ, the trade that I'm still in. I, it, they have been pounding this 330 level. I got to think that here, let me pull it up. Sorry, I had your, I had your uh, Oakley up. Um, 
Ooh, I have gross. to think. Uh, I have to think they take three thirty out. I mean, they just they keep buying. It's just like a, a full, just like a, a spigot of mm. buys. So spy broke was, down there at the gates. Yeah. There, that's uh, that's. I should have been keeping a closer eye on the spy. Uh, we got a quick down move there in the spy towards four thirty eight. We'll see if the spy keeps breaking down there. Definitely multiple resistance tried to get through the four forties on the spy, and then we just quickly went down towards the support. I'm out. I'm out. It's all right. We'll set up for the next one. Hey, that's what it is, guys. You got to just stick to the trade plan. And and sometimes, and, and this is going to happen, it's very hard. But if you get out on your risk, give yourself a pat on the back. That's what it's about, guys. It's not about staying in there and then just being like deer in headlights if it goes to 1525. Because when you get into becoming a bigger trader, when you're going to start taking bigger sizing, and especially if you're trying to do this more as a day trade and with bigger sizing, you need to be disciplined. That that loss right there that was a small loss could be really bad. Let's say if I was swinging there at a thousand shares and then I just froze up for a second and didn't take that 1550. So I'm just taking a look around here. Dog Z, man, this thing, I, I'm looking at the scanner. I'm clicking on all the different things on the scanner. In fact, two airlines just hit the scanner. Looks like they're having kind of a rough morning. But Dog Z here, this is working out. I, th this trade, something's going on here. I can feel it, all right? I can feel it. So we took out 330. We took out 331. And then there's more uh, more stock being offered here at 332. Um, they just keep buying. I think that this has room to 338. I kind of want to stay in this. I think we're going to get a, a little bit of a bigger pop here. Uh, so I, I'm still in this. Haven't closed this out yet. Uh, like what I'm seeing so far, hope we don't get a, a really sharp pullback here. Uh, AEHR, this thing just absolute monster. This thing is continuing uh, to push. It looks like above 18. We, we snapped through 18 here, pushing up towards 1840. Man, if you're in this, this is, this is a, this is a big thing. This was on one of our programs too. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, but this this stock was on there, and this looks lit. Um, let's take a look at Sundial. Let's see how we're doing. This is why we wanted to wait until the market opened, right? We got some of that volume. Sundial really kind of pulling back. To me, if we pull if we pull past the seventy one cent level, so pretty much one penny we're from where we're at right now, we break this and trade back down. We could be in some trouble. So. Um, this is exactly why I just didn't want to believe Sundial. It looks like Baba on the scanner too. What's Baba doing? There's these Chinese names. I'm, I guess I'm surprised to see this. It looks like they're bouncing a little bit. This is going to be a no touch for me though. Yeah, this is one of those danger days in the spy where I think we could get a crackdown if it keeps moving on down here. So I'm paying attention. I want to see it get back through that 440s to give me confidence that we're back into the bull, back into the bull control here. Let's see if we get that on the spy. I'm also putting out an order to try to maybe add towards my bros trade. Uh, I did see a nice dip there. Wanted to get 4250s, but it just went right off that level way too quickly. Didn't give me a shot. And this is one of those that clearly shows you that you got to be careful, guys. Look at the spread on this thing. The spread sometimes goes as wide as 30 cents on this name. So you got to be careful when you're trading a stock like that. Um, I normally... If I see a stock that's trading that wide, I probably try to stay away from it. But this is more of a swing trade for me. Sorry about uh, sorry about leaving you hanging there. Um, no, you're day, good, man. The, the day trade that I'm in is it, there's a lot of stuff going on. So there's some movement. I, I hear you. Got to pay attention. Capital gotta, preservation keeps them keeps Mitch in the money. But really, it's it, that's what it's about. Is I like the especially when you're a newer trader. Survival is the game, guys. When you're a new trader. I just want you to think about how do I survive? How do I make this account last the whole year? There's too so, many traders that try to like go with their first account and their goal is to be a thousand percent return on the year. That's just, that's just unrealistic expectations. Try to your first year in trading. First thing that you used to be trying to do is not lose money. Yeah. The second thing you try to do is yep. try to just be break even trader. And the and the third thing you try to do after you can be a break even trader is get yourself in the discipline so that you can get that green result. I think it's very important for traders to, to try to find that on their own. You know, one of the things that I got told when I first started this by someone that had far more experience than me, uh, and I've said this a number of times, he said, Ryan, you need to learn how to lose before you learn how to win. 
and, and at first I was like, that, how does that make sense at all? Like, I'm, I'm just going to learn how to make money. I, I you know, I, I'm in this to make money. And, and the reality is, is he was, he was talking about capital preservation. You have to learn how to keep your losses small. You have to learn how to manage your risk. You have to learn how to deal with when your plan doesn't work out the way that you think or hope that it's going to work out. And that should be step one. And if you can do that and you can preserve your capital and you can live to fight another day, eventually you're going to hone on your process to the point where you're going to be able to hit a lot of these and, and actually make quite a bit of money. So, um, I'm really glad I learned that lesson. Uh, I'm really glad that I had people around me in my support system teaching me that. Uh, I, I love to hear you talk about capital preservation, Mitch. I think that's really, really smart. I think that goes a long way in helping uh, newer traders figure their way out through this career because it's not easy. It's yeah, not easy. You, you know, what I always say is try to stay in the game for as long as you can before that account goes because what you're trying to do is see if your system works, right? And our system might not work in 10 trades. But maybe after 50 trades, it starts balancing out and it starts you start seeing the results actually going in your direction. The best thing to do there is to give it that sample size, right? It's a, a five trade sample size. It's not really a sample size in statistics. So try to get that a little bit more and you can see how your trade's doing. Uh, Lisa Lay, I'm going to start calling you the hunter since your last name there is Hunt. I'm going to start calling you the hunter because... QS, look at that move. Look at that VWAP bounce. Oh, that's that's the one I should have been buying up. <laughs> that's a, a that's a hindsight 2020 right there. But definitely a nice little pop up coming back to VWAP. What I what what did I call out for Oatly? I said go slightly below, close, and then take the shot right off the VWAP, and then you could hold towards the low of that breakdown attempt. So the low here could have been 2336. You're getting in somewhere, let's say even 2350s, and you're holding down right underneath that level. And then it comes right back through the highs. You could sell some through the high at 2376, then look for the extension on up for the next level up. Uh, QS, not a bad move there. By the hunter being called out in the chat. Not, not at all. Not at all a bad move there. And honest to God, if we take out 2466, I mean, I think we can actually pop. I think this goes higher. I'm just going to say this it's right now. I'm not one, in this, but sure. I think this goes higher here. And, and and I wouldn't be surprised if we actually end up challenging the can. What is this candle from? September 24th. We got a high print there of what? Uh, let me, let it me was pushing it. on the daily. Yep. Looks like we're high getting uh, mentions 24th. of MCFT boat seller here. Uh, is this is this the boat seller? No, this is MCBC Holden. This is just too choppy, man. This is very hard. You got the agos taking over here, Jay. Uh, I part. I personally would stay away from a stock like this, just because whenever I see this amount of choppiness, I mean, really, it's just hard to trade there. But do you have some scalping ability here? Yeah, I think I think the algos are scalping it right there through the twenty six seventy fives and holding down towards twenty six fifties. It's a really tight trade. But there is some scalping action there, I can see. All right, looks like R-E-N-N -N having a good day here. Let's go ahead and take a look here. What did we get out the open? It came back down, held 20, now pushing back up really strong. This one's probably the strongest mover of the day. What I liked about this one is that it did give you a pattern setup. We should have kept this one on the radar. And for that, I'll give myself a non-pat on the back, a pat on the forehead, and being like, stick with the stocks so they are moving sometimes. This one was a good one, R-E-N-N. -N. Yeah, it sure was. This actually looks really strong too. Yeah, really strong. Uh, I, That's I, why I got, a, I got a minute chart here. We just took out the day high that we took that we set right out of the open. Mm -hmm. Huge green volume here. This might go ahead. There we go. Pop right through the high again. Wow. Yeah, it's strong. Definitely strong. One thing that I will mention though, the spread sometimes going as wide as 20 cents there. So right there, the spread actually opened up 36 cents. Look how the spread is really spreading out here. This is probably going to go into a halt here. R-E-N-N, -N, but this these are the ones that you got to be careful with when you go and you put a hotkey order on the ask because if you do have hotkey orders, what does it do? It changes with the order. And if you're hitting the ask, you can very easily all of a sudden extend yourself 40 cents away from the bid, which is what you probably don't want to do in this type of situation. There's a halt. It already did. Like as it's I said it, yeah, you did. As I said, it literally it went into the hole. 
And that, I mean, look at, we were just talking about that in a 22 bust and here we are halted 2340. This is why those high of day breaks on the day trades are, this is why people trade them. It's mm -hmm. because you can get these big pops like this and you can have really, really nice profits in a short amount of time. Yeah. Now we, we've talked about it quite a bit. I don't like being trapped in halts, Mish. I don't know if you like being trapped in halts. It, it's, First I don't halts like, don't scare me too much to tell you the truth. The volatility Ryan. ones. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's the first halt. That's my rule with halts. At least I've yeah. seen a lot of halts in my day trading days. And in my day trading days, what I found out, probability of it continuing going up on the first halt is actually high. Probability on the second halt is in the middle. It's usually 50-50. Probability on the third halt is actually to the downside. Um, reason why is that you're talking about at that point, you're talking about probably a 30 to 40% move. And it's yeah. just very hard to continue a stock in that direction without any type of pullback. Sometimes you'll get that third halt to actually pull back, halt on the downside, and then it comes back and halts on the upside. So for me, I had a rule that I was okay with sticking with one halt. If I got in the halt and I was already in it and I'm in a great position, I'm usually looking for the stock to open and I'm going to throw out an order a little bit above so that if I get a quick spike, I get a quick fill and I'm just out of the trade. Now, what I definitely don't want to do is get caught in that second halt. If I do get caught in that second halt, a lot of the times what I would do, Ryan, is as soon as it opens up off that second halt, I don't even care where the price is. I'm Flatten. hitting the bid flatten just get out and that, yeah, that, just, that, so so that's the thing because like when when something halts to the upside like kind of like ren did here right it mm -hmm. feels good if, on the long side it, yeah you, you, you there's clearly buying interest there's volume to match the price movement there there's 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 bid stacked up so this you're i, I see what you're saying in terms of a, a volatility halt this isn't this isn't bad the the issue is is when you halt on the way up and then you halt back down to the downside that is very very dangerous mm -hmm. and i want to be out before that first downside halt hits for sure i mean for sure all right let's see if we can see some daily levels to where the stock can go where where is it heading to okay so well, let's pull up the weekly here um where's the next major resistance so next major resistance for me is going to be when it starts getting up here towards 40 24 40s so we actually still got a little bit of room here i think we're right now at 23 yeah 23 40 so we got another dollar up i think we can get at least right out the gates. That's when I'm going to be looking to see if we can get it. And then the next level from that would be 2670. Um, the real resistance that you can clearly see, and I'd go back um, to the monthly. And when you go back to the monthly, you're going to be able to see it kind of really stand out is more up here towards the thirties. And so we got our levels really to start looking for resistance to hold. So 24, 40s 26 70s and then 30s will be the next level ups so look for those to kind of hold get above come down to it then pussed out from that what does that give you that gives you the ability to go ahead and see if you get that break of resistance hold the support break of resistance hold the support that's what i'd be looking for out the gates uh looks like we got about one two three four five let me see when this halted um I know that that's why I like using my Benzinga Pro. You'll see right here. Look, watch. I'll just go, oh, I, I, I don't know on my charting service when this is going to open up. But if I have Benzinga Pro, I can go ahead and see right here. Okay, so we halted on Circuit Breaker up 41% at 947.42. So what that gives me, I halt breakers are usually either five minutes or a 10 minute. Um, so in, th in this case, I'd be thinking five, I'd be thinking 952.42. And so we could kind of draw a, t a time here. Let me see. I think, I think I can get the time here. I know one of these gives us a clock here. Trying what are you trying to do? I'm sorry. Oh, just trying to get the clock, the actual clock on my. Oh, on your computer? Yeah, yeah. I, I always like to pull up the clock here. So let me try to see if I can get this up here. I remember there's... Uh, the clock button uh dogz is starting to get really really interesting here volume really starting to pick up we're at 333 there's 334. the open there it is 52 it was right at the 42 um right before 953 you should see it and actually ticked down 
This is why you got to be careful there if you were pushing the ask on that 23, right? Because you might have gotten 2346. That's how I lost uh, 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 very easily. Uh, I lost here. Let me go ahead and, and reshare my other screen here. Um, that's how I lost $750 one time, Ryan. I'll tell you about that story in a second. But Sorry. Dealing yeah. with uh, an issue here at work. Uh, no worries, man. Go ahead and handle that. All right, guys. So we're seeing Ren right now pushing on through that hall. It actually out of the hall came down here. Let's see if we get back through that level. Uh, the halt was actually at 2341. Let's see if we can get back through that. And Ren continues to push. Definitely one of the biggest movers on the day. Just did a major push up. We'll see if it gets back through that level. The All right, GNX. what's up, dude? You seeing GNX? No, no, no I'm sorry. I, I was I, Chris's comment here. I hope TNX scares people out of tech into the JPM earnings because historically there's a nice rotation into tech during Q4. So JPM earnings are next week, and there's actually a slew of bank earnings. So um, I, I agree with this. I, I'd like to see these the banks trade up here because I, I eventually I do want tech to take the next leg up. Spy trying to break through the lows. Let's see what happens on there. If we get a reversal from that point. Also, the Qs, multiple lows in the same area. We're looking to see if we get a strong reversal here or we get breakdowns. Let's see what happens. Let's Apple, go back Apple holding so far. Apple holding so far. That's good. Good news. That, so that to me, what that I, I usually use Apple and Tesla as my overall market indicators, at least for strength and momentum. Uh, Tesla, how's it doing today? Coming on down there, ooh, I was thinking about taking shorts at 800. It's so hard, so hard to short Tesla. I got to say, whoever can do that, let's just say uh, you, you got you got some that I don't. <laughs> uh, by the you way, got some out, that I don't. Out DOGZ here, I saw the volume, uh, the buying volume kind of slow down a little bit. We were at uh, – at a really good resistance point. Oops, I pulled up the wrong stock here. Uh, gotcha. So I actually closed this. Don't here. be a dog, bro. Be a dog Z. <laughs> exactly. Uh, nice trade here. This actually still might go higher. If it does, I'll look to rebuy this. Uh, but for right now, locking in some of those gains until this thing pulls or, or makes a decision on where it's going to go. So, okay. Should be able to pay more attention now that the trade is over too. Awesome. Good way to start well, off today. People are getting me hungry in the chat because they're talking about D-Nut. So, uh, Bug, I'll take a look at it. But to tell you the truth, all you're doing is just making me hungry, dude. <laughs> Krispy Kreme, what do they call them? Heart attack rings? Wait, Oof, man. <laughs> if, if, if there's one thing that I can eat a, a crap ton of, I could eat donuts all day. Oh, man. They're, they're so good. <laughs> they're yeah, so good. I mean, especially with coffee in the morning. Oh, oh good man. Lord. Uh, but, yeah, this one – I thought for a second we might have another meme stock when it was coming back up here towards the 1759, but it just doesn't want to hold. And if you know the history of Krispy Kreme, what has happened in the past for Krispy Kreme, Ryan? Do you know? No. It used to be public, went private for a reason, oh. guys, and came back to the public market for a reason. Um, as we know, a lot of times uh, stocks love to go back to public because probably someone wants out. So we'll see what happens in this stock. I would pay attention to after the lockup period. That's what I'm going to put out there for, for Krispy Kreme. And uh, one of the things Cinnamon I'm seeing here donuts. is CRISPR, right? This has been a darling recently. Ticker CRSP really kind of just sinking out of the open here. Um, you know, if I take a look at the daily, we actually look like we're trading down into a support area. So yeah. if, you wanted to if you wanted to try to play this for a bounce, uh, this is actually not a bad area to take this. Um, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not in this. I'm. This is. I, I don't necessarily have an edge, but this is actually a really compelling spot here. Taking. I just see CEI hit the scanner. This thing has just been an absolute craziness the past few days. This came back on from what was it? We talked about this, Mitch. This came what from like 470 <laughs> all the way back down to. I, I. It's. I know it's pushing back up, but I think that your call is going to stand. It's not going to take. It's not going to set new highs. It's not going to set $4. I didn't even give it $4. So uh, to me, that's the level to see on CEI. It would need to break four for it to really be bullish. To me, it's going to run into resistance at 250s. Uh, that's kind of the level that I would see for it to run into resistance and then probably head back down. Personally, I think below $1. But 
that's just what I'll be paying attention yeah, to. No, I think that you're right. And I'm going through the chat here. Tom Brady saying, not touching CRISPR. I got burned on RK, ARKG once, never again. From what I know, Tom Brady doesn't get burned. Uh, unless yeah. he's playing the he, Eagles. He's a season. GOAT. Goats don't goat. get burned. But, um, but <laughs> as, as far as CRISPR goes, I mean, CRISPR, this, this has just been such a good stock. It, it, it's, it's been such a huge winner. I think that one of the reasons I'm enticed to play this is because it can move so crazy. And, the, and it, it was, you know, this is the, the gene editors, right? This was along with. Um, with <laughs> Sorry to interrupt there, yeah, but yeah, I, I, I can't Ren. blame it. Rodrigo knows. Ren. Look at that. Look what did it do. Hold 22 right back to it. Are we going for hold number two? That's Let's wild. see what That's happens wild. here. It pulled a dollar forty cents, then went right back to the highs, busted it, and is now pushing. Unbelievable! It, it, look, look how it holds that high. You see the the resistance I drew out. Look how it held it. Look, yeah, literally right literally to, to twenty four thirty nine nice. to nice the penny. Job, Mitch. That's why we do this to the penny. That's why you draw the levels, guys. There's levels to this game. Drake said it best. <laughs> There's levels to this game, oh, man. Oh, you make me laugh, man. Rodrigo, to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, there he goes. There he goes, guys. And that's why you got to draw your levels. Always try to look back, try to see where you could possibly. It doesn't guarantee. There's no guarantee in trading. I can, I can tell you right now from a person that's been in here for five years going at this, Ryan knows it like I know it. If anything's 100% in trading, let us know because we're buying it and keeping it for Benzinga Pro. <laughs> yeah. This is live trading in the morning. Can I give you a hot stock pick? Like yeah. A hot yeah. Stock pick? yeah. Right here. Hot, hot stock right pick now. incoming right now. Hot stock pick. Samsung hot stock. Electronics. What, what is it? it? You going to buy? Samsung Electronics. Samsung Ooh, Electronics. Ooh, isn't that on? Oh, that's OTC though. That's one. OTC. It's hot though. Michael Murray's giving you that. It's the hot stock blessing, my man. Hey, OTC <laughs> coming with the fire there. The Samsung. What is Samsung's? Ticker there. Uh, yeah, I, I you know I can never remember it because I got it here. OTC I think I got it here. I think it's I think it's S S G F F. But <laughs> I mean, maybe someone can 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 go ahead and, and confirm that one. What, what was me. that? What did you say? F -F? I have S S G F F. No. Um, no. Samsung. Uh, there's a couple of them here. It's just because when you when you trade OTC, sometimes you get like these off exchange ones. Um, I got here SSNGY. But Michael's man, messing with us. That's Sam no, no, no. It had it had news today. I don't I don't mind him bringing the stock. It actually had news. It, it they put out good good uh, guidance. The, the problem is, this, is so, okay. So is this OTC SSGFF? That, that's what I was thinking. But yeah, I don't I, I mean, I, no, this doesn't even resolve in, in pro. Someone help us out with the Samsung ticker. Right? Samsung. I don't know it, man. Let's go back to Ren. Are we going to get the second w. halt? Oh, but this is. <laughs> Look how that resistance held, man. <laughs> it's crazy when the resistance holds to a penny. That's when you start thinking, oh, yeah, technicals work 100%. <laughs> We know how that one goes, right? Yeah, right, right? yeah no way. Nothing's 100%, man. <laughs> Nothing's 100%, man. <laughs> Looks like someone's putting also the SN, SSNGY. I had that one. Yeah, n none of them seem to resolve. Interesting. Yeah, it, that's that's what happens when you're on the OTCs. Yeah, that's, well, that's OTCs, the thing. That's the thing. We also, no, I don't. I, you know, I don't I started, even touch I it. I started with OTCs. I've been burned by more OTCs than I care to admit. Um, it's just not a part of my trading plan. It's I, it's it's not for me. I won't touch it if you if you give me the money to buy the stocks. Let's just say that there's a reason why. Jay Rice, shout out. This works 99% of the time. When Dennis Gartman makes a call, do the opposite. Turn bearish. <laughs> I do that for uh, basketball for Charles Barkley. <laughs> oh, Charles. I fade Charles all the time. Charles. If, if he calls out my team, I literally almost start crying. I'm like, you just, yo. Because you have just, to fade your own team? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, man, why'd you do that to me, Barkley? Yo, so so Zoltan, I see Zoltan in the chat here saying that T-Mobile uh, has a great new customer acquisition program. T-Mobile has been a monster mm -hmm. stock. Uh, Reese, this this thing on a huge one. Now we've pulled back quite a bit here. I'd actually wait a little bit. I think we could pull back a little bit more to come into the support area. But this thing has been an absolute monster. Ticker All right, really quick look at the spy here. Five minute. Look at that pattern, Ryan, on the five minute of the spy. 
chop fest, right? Isn't that what we talked about? That's literally what we've been seeing all morning. But one thing I do, right, is my rule of three. Now we've gotten what? We got a big push right here. We got a big push. This is the third push. When I see three pushes, what do I always look for? A hold the support. Come back down, hold that support. Now I'm I'm 100%. That would be my out right here if I'm long here and I'm looking for it to break out through these levels, get strong at 439.75 and get on up through that 440. It looks Let's like it's it breaking holds. through there. I mean, I, I do think you're right. I do think you need that to build above. And I think that this is actually help with other tech plays today, right? So if you want to watch the SPY as your indicator, um, that, that should help if you're going to trade some of those other names. Looks like we're going to pop above that. I'd be, I, I mean, it, it feels like it wants to. And if and webcoin calling out Vix dropping like a stone, uh, if that keeps happening, we're gonna punch through that. Punch yeah, that. good job. Way to call that out, Web. Appreciate you doing that. Uh, let's take a look here. What I always talk about, right? Do I see the pattern on multi time frames, right? So let's see the one minute. Oh, it's right there. Let's see the 15 minute. Oh, it's right there. Let's see the one hour. Oh, looks like they could be trading right here. Looks looks like a bigger time frame chart, but right through the same levels right through that same levels, which is important there. Then the daily. Okay, so inside candle, they're looking for it to hold above the, the close. The close we got here, 439.60. So it's trying to get above that level. So let's see if we can get that level cleared out right now, which is 439.50 right there. Get it above that, 439.60s. multi time frames. all traders looking into one area. That's when I start paying attention because if you do get the breakout here, What's going to happen? All the traders will be looking at it in the same kind of trend. And that's when I really like to jump on stocks because, I mean, at the end of the day, we can't know who's trading with us. But when right. all the time frames match up, you can kind of have that more that, that greater sense that everyone's trading in one direction. Well, that's the thing. You're always looking to put data points that align together, right? So mm-hmm. if, if one of the things that you're looking for are different time frames, you want it, the more time frames that your plan is appearing on, generally speaking, the better that is. I'm a big fan of, you know, Mitch, one of the things that I struggled with when I first started is I became locked into a chart. D- depending on what I was doing, I'd be locked into the daily or I'd be locked into the five minute. And it was like, I needed to kind of expand and go back and forth to really get a holistic picture of what was going on. I'm a huge fan of the, of checking multiple time frames. Yeah. I think what it does is it, it, you, it brings you more of the psychological look than just a technical look, right? Because there's a technical look and there's the psychology of that technical analysis. All right, let's keep going. Let's go through a sector time. You guys know how I like to call out sectors from the open. Let's go ahead and take a look. What do I have up? I have energy up, actually, guys. I'm going to call out some of the biggest movers in energy. Of course, CEI is showing up there. PED, that's another one that you can take a look at. Look for an extension back. Uh, it holds VWAP here. I do like it. Uh, REI is another one. This one's an interesting one. Uh, I think this one might take over for CEI. I've been watching this one. Ring energy. Look at this one. Yeah. Look at that daily. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. Th- this this one's actually hitting scanners too. I was I was just watching this one while we were talking before. This thing is a monster. Four four. What was that? Four eleven was the was the recent break here. Um, mm-hmm. We're actually at a pivot too. Um, this is. Let me make sure I get. This yeah, I'd there. keep this one on watch. I, I like the way it trades. You pivot. I like the way it trades. It, it, it seems interesting. And to me, whenever you got a stock like CEI that was in an area, I always look for what the laggard play, what's going to come next, not the stock that everyone's looking at. And to me, REI could easily be that stock. All right, let's keep going. Time to get back in CEI. I I, I wouldn't do that with my money, but it's up to you guys. Always do your own risk assessment. I never take a stock that went down that fast I, I, that would just be a rule for me if a stock broke from three dollars to one dollar anytime i don't want to say i don't want to be in that stock that stock scares the living death out of me um reason why i have been in those times where you get a really bad loss and with that being said you start being a little bit more disciplined once you get those big losses Oh uh, yeah. But you, you learn more you. from your losses. You learn more from your losses than you do from your wins. And all, all it takes is to get slapped around a little bit on a big <laughs> loss. You won't make that mistake again. All right, let's go back to Ren here. And I'm going to tell you guys about a story that I actually lost $750 on a thousand shares 
in less than 10 seconds, guys. Um, just to guys, Damn, show what happened? You, just to show you that it, it happens, guys, right? And and, and you're going to hear about stories like this. So what this story should be more long is not necessarily that it can't happen to you, but how can we really grasp the knowledge here so that it doesn't happen to us? So to me, what happened on on a, a stock, it was actually uh, KBSF. I still remember the name. That's a runner, uh, definitely a low float penny type of runner. And what happened on that one was it was going through a level that was really big. Like let's say on this stock, the same way you saw it in this area, there's Ren trying to get back through that high. We'll see if it gets through 2439s. The next level up, I just want to call it out again, just in case we get to that level. Let's go back on the daily so we can see it is 2670. That's where I would see it kind of getting that next level up towards the push. Uh, we'll see if we get it through there. But when you see this kind of motion, right, when you get that breakout, that big breakout that we got through 21 dollars what did we see at the top here we saw the ask at 2341 and the bid all the way down towards 22 this is a clear example of why you guys can get caught yep. what i did was i hit the hot key right boom i jumped in and if it would have been this stock i would have been getting filled there at 2441 uh, with a thousand shares when the market opened what did it do it opened already 50 cents down, I would have been down $500 to begin with. And then the stock would have done a little tick down. And what would that have done to me? That would have scared the bejesus out of me because I would have been seeing my trade that was at one point, maybe I'm risking $200 in, in my eyes. Now I'm already down $700 on the name. And you have to determine, is your reward potentially $1,400 here? A lot of the times it's going to be a no. This is deer in headlights time. You either have to hit the outs or you're just going to get stuck. And so I hit the out and I still to this day got to give myself a pat on the back because that's what it's about. Understanding your risk assessment and the risk was way too high for me. I did not want to be part of the trade anymore and I got out. Did it hurt? Hell yeah. I mean, I blew like, like, I think like it was like, uh, uh, like 20% of the account at the time, uh, in, in oh one trade. Gosh. Um, and so, yeah, that hurts. That hurts anybody. But one thing you can do is learn that, hey, what happened there? I overextended myself. Mm -hmm. I jumped in on a hotkey. I said, I'll take it. And I didn't, what? Assess my risk, my real risk in the trade. And the real risk was for it to come back down all the way towards the low, the five minute low, the 15 minute low, look for that low. And if it undercuts that, that's your true risk. Sometimes I feel like we, as traders, we try to give ourselves a level, but also look for the, the bigger time frame support, because that's what I call the true risk. Because at any point in time, a stock can always just quickly turn around on you. Uh, real quick, while you were going there, um, REI pulled back a little. RSLS uh, looks strong, pushing towards the top there. And AEHR also still pushing. I mean, this thing looks like it's got a 20 magnet going right now. Honestly, Whew, this is a stock that I, I mean, I don't know who trades this one, but I, I do know there's, there, there's people that have been talking about this stock for so long. And I mean, I don't know when I drew this level or I drew this buy area. It looks like it was on October 5th. We got to see what we were talking about here. Um, I was I was calling out this level probably on on Money Mitch. Uh, I was calling out this buy area. That's where you see that square. Um, reason why is because it filled the gap. It gapped up here, right? Gapped up on the 24th. Then I wanted to see it fill the gap and then break out through that gap. That's literally what you got there. Yep. So nice little buy area. I've been seeing these shadow fills, Ryan, like none other. Like normally I see some shadow fills. I've been seeing crap ton of shadow fills. I'm almost about to change to a shadow fill type of strategy. And I never have thought I, about doing that, Ryan. Yeah, I've never done that myself either. I've never Ooh, done wow. it. SDPI pop, but huge pop. Look, look around, Ryan. I will. See, I'll look into it. I'm see, always see looking you to see add it. new tools to the toolbox. Yeah, you always got to keep your eyes open, right? And when I see always. something, it, it, at first, it's not like I confirm the pattern. At first, I get more speculative. I'm like, nah, that's not there. I'll, I'll try to look for it in other stocks. If it starts showing up everywhere, that's when I start being like, okay, we got to start testing something, some stuff. Something's going on, yeah. All right, RSLs. there you go. AE. 
HR pushing through 1935, holding that 19 on that push. It's going to be interesting to see if it continues to keep going. Ren, uh, let's go back to it. It's been fighting to get through the highs. What are we starting to see? We're starting to see that third high here. Um, at least in my eyes, I always start looking for what? Now we need to hold support because we're starting to get these kind of breakout attempts. But if you don't break out, what usually happens, right? We usually come back to support. Yep, and you get pulled but right back to the support. Yep, if it doesn't want to go, it's going to go back to where it can load up again. Uh, so th for me, th the support right now is 22. You could draw it up a little bit higher on this wick, maybe 2250s, and it could maybe hold there. But I definitely do wouldn't want to see it break through the 22 because that would be like a complete retrace of the – and then you can get that down gap. That's what we definitely are trying to avoid here. Uh, we'll see what happens with REN – three times to try to get through that high i would be okay with a dip towards 23 22 59 but it needs to get through 24 now and really start giving us that volume if you, if you do dip you need to hold in reverse now it looks like it is going to push back up there so let's see what happens here so you could you could draw a trend line and what you want to do is you want to see it close above this not wick close above this that's the important part the if you get you can get caught a lot of times on those wicks right like let's say right here you're like oh i think the breakout's through 24 as soon as you see 24 on the ask you go and you buy now it's all the way back down towards 2350 that's why you need to sometimes i like to what i like to do is look at the bid side and the ask side talk to yourself understand hey if i get in on the ask where can the bid go down to because if the bid is where you're going to get out on and you're getting in on the ask then you got to be careful because that's how you can get caught in between the spread. The spread itself yeah. is a risk and then the level underneath it is a risk. So understand both of those. That's good advice, Mitch. CLNE, by the way, CLNE off the scanner here. Someone else was calling it, I think, in the Clean chat. Clean energy. J yeah, uh, Jay, good call here. Uh, he, he's telling us this is still going. It is, and it's I the love Wall it. Street Bets name. Love it. Love the, love the chart. Clean chart. Nice push. Good levels, big volume into the first push at 875, showing you that there were sellers at 875. It came back to what? Prior resistance, which was right here. You can clearly see these wicks. Resistance, resistance, third try, hold, push up, come back to it, then break out. We see these all the time, guys. Old that's resistance that's becomes wild. support. Uh, CLSK is one I wanted to take a look at. Uh, Clean Spark. Let's see what happens with this one. I was looking to see if this one was going to start getting hot through 15. 15 is a big, important level for this one. Uh, with this one, I'm also watching other Bitcoin stocks like any uh, BTCM, uh, BTBT, Mara. Good They're call. all yep. kind of into interested and kind of into the plays right now. A lot of traders are trading these. So the one that I have seen lag is Riot. For some reason, some traders are not liking Riot. You know, I I just generally don't buy the uh, the Riot Mara connection to Bitcoin. Like that's just that's just a me thing, right? I just don't like playing them. There were other names that seemed to be moving with them a little bit better. You mentioned them, BTBT. BT. I think you mm -hmm. mentioned Hut in there as well. Uh, yeah. Riot and Mara, I just I kind of stay away from. I feel like that's where the crowd is. It, it's not it, it's not for me. It has really worked. Uh, for a lot of people, though, uh, Chris, shout, again, another shout out to Chris here, who's been trading JPM, uh, JPM, new high of day. looks like they pulled it a little bit, but a new high of day. Chris, keep it up, man. All right. I'm going to put your new screen new on new for highs. one second, Ryan, and I will be right back. Yep, no problem. I'm gonna go ahead and, and keep trying to run through here. You can see what I've what I'm basically running here are just a couple of scanners. So this first one here, this is predominantly um, this is I don't know why this got cleared out. This is predominantly a relative volume scan, and we're looking for uh, like a turn up in terms of the change. And I'm actually gonna lower this. Maybe we can actually get some more uh, more results here by lowering this threshold. Let's see what we get. All right, so we're looking at KOS. And, and so basically what I'm doing here is I'm just looking for any of these things that come through the scanner. I'm going to go ahead and pull them up and take a look at it. Take a look at RSLS. Looks like we pulled a little bit here from the 325 level, but this thing was running like crazy. Let's take a look at some of the other ones that we're actually waiting on. AEHR. 
crude above 80, not loving that for my gas prices. Chris, the gas prices this entire year have been have been horrible. Uh, I haven't been liking any of it. AEAR, AEHR, looks like we pulled from the 1940 level down towards 19. Looks like we're holding here. I would imagine we take the next leg up here. RSLS now hitting the scanner again. It's turning back up towards the highs. I think we take out this 325 here, guys. 325, this looks like the spot. You'll probably pop this. This can be a nice little scalp trade here. Um, let's take a look at BEST. BEST pushing new highs. Uh, let me catch up here with the chat as well. Can you look at Apple? I'm tr um, I'm trying my hand at options, and I own the 22 October 140. And I own the 22 October. Oh, the ones that expire October 22nd, 145 call. Just wondering what you think. Let's take a look here at Apple. One of the things that I'm worried about here uh, with tech is I, I want to see, Chris talked about it a little bit earlier. We want to see a rotation back into tech. Probably not going to happen um, for another month or so, I would say. As far as your particular trade here, you have the October 22nd, 145 call. So you have plenty of time on that. We're only a dollar beneath that. So I think you actually have a really good strike and expiry selected with what you have so far. Um, if we take a look at the daily chart here, uh, Apple's been one of those frustrating ones, right? Because I this is something that I play all the time. I have a long-term position in this that I bought back in 2014 that I'm still holding. And then I trade options around my core position, especially around earnings. And this was really frustrating this year because 150 was a clear spot that we needed to break through. Took a couple of tries to get through it. As soon as we got it, we actually pulled back down through it. And now we're pulling a little bit more. Um, as far as Apple goes, like long-term, I obviously really like this. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping that 138 is the low here, but to be quite honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if this got tested again. If we continue with some of the, the positive momentum here, what I would do, Julie, is I would say, don't be afraid to take your gains on this. Uh, if you if you do get gains on this, don't be afraid uh, to take them because we could very easily turn back down. I mean, October has been very choppy as it is so far. Um, Mitch, are you long Airbnb? We will ask Mitch when he returns. No problem. Boom, baby. Whoa, out of nowhere. Way to go. Uh, no, I, I actually got stuffed out. I'm oh, gonna, okay. I'm, I'm, I'll do tears on that one because if you look on the chart and I can show you exactly where I got stopped out, I got, uh, as they say, Goldman Sachs. You got Goldman Sachs? <laughs> yeah, I got Goldman Sachs. That's hilarious. Uh, that was this uh, candle right here. Look at this candle, Ryan. Look at that that oh, army candle. Oh, that's what you call Goldman Sachs. <laughs> and right there, you, where well, you see those lines all crossing, <laughs> that's where I was stopping out, guys. And the reason why is because my rules just tell me I got to get out there. And if the rules say you got to go sometimes even with the rules, even though like my brain was telling me, no, nah, this is just a down day. It's just trying to stop me out. It came back all the way to my entry when I was up 10 points. You don't let that become a loser. That's just the rule for me, at yeah, least. For sure. Um, it, did it suck? Yeah, I mean, I, I would still be holding it right now. Um, we, let's see if I'd still be holding it. I look for 20 to 30% gains there. So about 55, look where we're at now, or about 12%. So I'd still be holding. I'd still be looking probably for the breakout through 20, 20% through the seven, uh, 175. Next level up for me. And I'm pretty sure this is probably where I was looking to sell was somewhere near 174, 97. So getting through that would be the first sell. And then the next sell would be up there towards the, the next high, which would be 200s, 210s. Uh, first sell would be just to get some profit, secure something and let the rest of it ride. Uh, but I do like the chart. Um, one that yeah. I did like with this one when I was looking at it was VAC. Uh, VAC is Marriott's vacation worldwide so you're talking timeshares you're talking that kind of thing i did call this one out near that bottom there i'm just trying to see if this one will continue going i would pay attention to this one with that airbnb trade i think they're going to run hand in hand so if, if you see airbnb run look for vac to have a good day if you see vac to have a good day look for airbnb to have a good day and with that being said it's just kind of relationships we don't always know if they're perfectly mm -hmm. correlated. You can do some research to see if they are correlated. But to me, the relationship's there. Uh, Hex Pony, good call. Uh, v Y G R. This is Voyager. Uh, we're really spiking on volume here. Um, one of the things that we're looking at here in Voyager, we are pretty much right at uh, not yesterday's, but the previous day's uh, intraday high or, or excuse me this is the high from like 11 o'clock we actually did set a high i'm gonna, I'm gonna mark these levels up so i can see them 
a little bit easier when we move towards towards today's chart. So here we go. And then I also want to mark off the level from the pre pre market uh, ex, uh, yesterday. Excuse me. All right. So so here's where we're at. So it looks like 412 is going to be the next spot. Um, if, if this continues, especially on this volume, I wouldn't be surprised at minimum if we test 420. Nice. Don't know if we're actually going to take that down, though. We we will see. Um, I think did we did we get a piece of news here? I actually didn't hear it in the squawk. We had an uh, that was the upgrade yesterday. Yeah, no new news today. Okay, so we'll just kind of watch Voyager here. Um, I bought the April calls yesterday. Keep running, please. Yeah, I, I bet that that's what you want. <laughs> which calls did you get, Webcoin? Uh, which which Webcoin did you? Or which web? Which Webcoin did you get, dude? Come on, <laughs> you gotta get that Webcoin. Webcoin needs to sell us or send us some Webcoin. That's the truth. Okay, so there we go, right through that 420 area, just hit, boom. That man, I took my eyes off the screen for one second, and it popped through here. What do we got on the on the high here? Well, uh, I, I think there's no perfect timing than to. Uh, I'll, I'll let it try to pop there, but we, we need to do a little little Bitcoin review here. Yeah, let's do it. No, let's let's do that. That's a good idea. I actually haven't looked at Bitcoin since I was in those trades. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to pull it up here. This is going to be brought to you by none other than Voyager, right? Let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, Bitcoin looks like it's actually down slightly, uh, but look what's up. Solana, Solana's up there 5.13%. I know that a lot of people have been taking a look at that. Uh, Shiba Inu out there? Any fans? Um, I know that that's, that's been definitely the hype out there. Uh, we'll see what happens with these cryptocurrency coins. As you guys can see, a mixed day there. Some in the green, some in the red, uh, uh, some a little bit deeper in the red than others, but nothing really standing out. Maybe that 5.13%. Uh, Matic up about 8.33%. So maybe check that one out. That's Polygon. Uh, we'll see if that one can get back up and continue trading. Like always, guys, you guys can get your free $50 on Voyager if you deposit 100 uh, So definitely, I would check it out, guys. It gives you an ability to kind of manage your risk already, right, if they're going to give you free money. So definitely take a look at it. And this was brought to you by Voyager. All right, let's get back to it. What are you seeing on there? Uh, well, I actually was Trill Money here was asking about open. He said, what about open? It's up 5%. Um, so we actually had a discussion on our happy hour program uh, a couple of maybe last week or the week before regarding some of these uh, companies like this, open, Zillow, uh, things like, like that. Um, yeah. The realtor the, that is in our that is that comes to our happy hour, our, the professional realtor. She one of the things she was saying is that th this is where everything is going, uh, and it, it doesn't look like there's anything. 100%. It doesn't look like they're coming back from this. Now Zillow is so deep in there; it's going to be hard to unseat them as the leader. Uh, but Open seems to be doing a, a good job. Now I've actually never used this product, so I'm only giving you what I've heard secondhand from other people, and then also the the industry professionals that we talk to about this. As far yeah. as we're looking at, I'm uh, uh, sorry, Mitch, as far as we're looking at here on a technical break, today's candle, awesome, right? This really pushed us above that $21 level. For me, I want to see a close above this level. If we close above this level, next up is going to be about $22.70 or thereabout. And if we pop above that, then we can start making a run towards some of these previous highs. So, so today's action, excellent. Don't know that I would necessarily chase here. I want to see this kind of hold and not just pull back in the same day. All right, so I haven't done this yet, but I definitely want to go ahead and do so. We got over 394 people watching right now and only 83 likes. Come on, guys. We're taking live trades, doing live analysis for you, and giving you everything that Ryan and I got. You guys are getting it all here, guys. So definitely do us a favor. Hit that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get it on up there to 200. Looks like we're at 88 right now. And like always, let's keep going. Let's see what we're seeing out there. So for open, I can tell you, Ryan, it is going to battle. It is going to battle with Zillow. The, 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 sure. the thing that is going to give Zillow a little bit of an advantage is that it, it diversified its business, right? It doesn't only sell on its product, right? So 
think about Zillow. A lot of it is a lot of it is the visitors and traffic now going to that site. And so what Zillow started doing is it started looking at what actually selling the houses, right? And so selling the houses is somewhere where open, I don't think they even want to touch. Um, that's where you start seeing the businesses kind of differentiate. And so what I would say is in the long run, open is going to do fine because it's giving you an advantage to limit the expenses, limit that money that you're giving back when you sell a house or purchase a house. And so with that being mentioned, I think it's all about the technology behind it. Yeah. And if you see, um, if you actually go to open doors, uh, kind of their website they actually give you numbers like it's insane how many people are doing applications on there a day and even like i think it's like every six seconds or something like that they have some crazy stat on their on their uh, website that tells you exactly how many times people are are kind of doing these applications and it's actually pretty pretty big and so one of the things also is that what is it doing it's helping you because of the pandemic what can you do you can just like record your house 3D. You don't need someone to come to your house with a big old camera and go through it like they used to. You know, you can just do a video walkthrough, get an offer in minutes. Uh, looks like right here, every 60 seconds, a homeowner requests an offer from Open Door. And I think that these numbers are only going to go up. And I think that that's what we were kind of discussing as the group. Exactly. The story is definitely to the digital digitalization of real estate i just feel bad for everybody that got a real estate license because there's only going to be so many that are going to be able to battle through this yeah, yeah. it's tough uh, i have i have, I have a, a lot of at, friends in there i want to take a look at uh, psfe here for ray um, let's do it i'll be honest pay you, safe bad bad um don't like <laughs> it at all ugly chart one of the one of the uglier ones that i've seen i actually did trade this with calls i still have some calls here that are going to expire worthless. I'll tell you what they are. I was going after the October 15 call. Uh, October 15 call. Obviously, that didn't work out. I'm going to take 100% loss as those expire worthless. This chart looks like that. This was a spec, right? This is the despacking process that it's going yes, through right now. Absolute death. Um, I have no. I am not rushing to buy this. I need the fundamentals to change. I need the <laughs> chart to look different. I need a lot of different stuff with this thing for this to be appealing. Not you don't, at all. You don't like throwing knives, Ryan? Um, I'm not going to answer that honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like trying to catch a Chinese star. Throw it up, and you try to catch it. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not it doesn't do that. look like a smart idea there. Uh, but I, I can't blame whoever went after PaySafe because I went after a falling so knife. So did I. I took a des desktop metal falling knife. Uh, if you guys don't know what this one is, also a D-spec that I took. And I started dipping my toes in this one. I'm looking to add underneath. And so I, at least wow. it's just a starter position. But definitely another knife that I'm trying to catch. I mean, hey, it happens. While but you it, were, while you were an saying that. While you were saying that, man, I just watched a day trade happen. LU, mm. ticker, ticker LU, right on the 770 spot, doing the exact same thing that we were talking about, taking down the uh, taking down the, the big seller there. And you could see this, that they did this several times. They, they walked this up. Gigantic seller right here at 770. They chomped it. They took it out. This thing popped. Big day trade. I mean, oh, man, you could. This is a 10 cent scalp in seconds, in seconds, if you're on that. So um, there's definitely, and look, here it is on the scanner. <laughs> so um, there, there's going to, there's even, even when stuff isn't, isn't going according to plan, there is gonna, there's going to be some opportunities. This one was a monster. Sorry, just kind of caught my eye as you were talking. No, I mean, uh, good call out there. That's LU, guys. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and just do a market recap for us. We're going to start wrapping up here. Um, I actually got an interview for you guys. Someone reached out to me, pointed out a chart that I should maybe take a double look on. And I, I'll, I'll be honest. I had already been looking at this chart. So it's always good to have those kind of reach outs from the audience. You guys out there, if you guys see something, let us know. Yeah, because that's what it's know. all about, really. I mean, we'll definitely take a double look. And that's why I wanted to get into our interview. We're going to get right to that. That's going to be with none other than the one and only trading nomadic. We'll get to that right now. But Ryan, I, I just want to point out the spy has been trying to get through that uh, 43 
uh, 43950 level, trying to get through that uh, 43969 level. We actually, I think, touched it right here, 43970. So that's going to be the level I'm going to be pointing out. We'll see if we can get through that level later on today and get ourselves up in this area through the 440s on the SPY. That's what I'd be looking for. And as you guys know, I did get one stop out today in Oatly, but guess what? Save myself some money, right? Because if not, it was heading down towards 15. And that's exactly what I didn't want to be a part of. So, hey, risk and return, always stay to it. And if the plan doesn't go, if the plan goes against you, it doesn't necessarily mean you lost or made an incorrect judgment. What it means is the market just didn't go in my probability today. And that's okay. That that's that's gonna happen, guys. All right, Ryan, anything else you want to leave us off with? Capital preservation. Don't, this isn't the Wild West. Be very careful. Be deliberate, but be tactical. Always, man. Always got to work on the process, building up the skills. Ryan, I hope you enjoyed your time in the office. I think you're going to be back uh, back home next week. But hey, like always, guys, if you guys want to check out the Benzinga headquarters, I would love for people to reach out to the company that want to come to Detroit and really check out the office. I think it's very beneficial. You know, we can't take everybody. We're not going to be able to take 500 people up there. But if you reach out, you could be very much that person that we show you our, our headquarters. Why not? Let, come check it out at Benzinga in Detroit, downtown. I know I enjoyed it. So definitely, if you guys get a chance, go ahead and do that reach out. That's going to do it for us, Ryan. I'm going to go ahead and get to Trading Nomadic, but thank you, like always, Ryan, for taking your time and trading with me. We'll be back at it next week. Have a good one, everyone. All right, let's go ahead. Let's bring on Trading Nomadic. How you doing out there, man? How's the market? It's going good, brother. Uh, I got a lot of stuff I'm looking at right now, but I, I've been seeing you know, a lot of chatter about mm -hmm. the GMEs, the AMCs, and every, okay. everything. So I decided to take a look at the GME chart um, last right. night. I, I kind of saw an interesting, interesting pattern here. I'll share, share that screen with me because I want to see it from your perspective, not from mine. I mean, of course, not mine. Yeah, I mean, sure. Let's go um, ahead. Let's take a look here. So my general strategy in trading is, you know, I'm looking for something that has sold off, right? And then formed, um, this is a harmonic reversal pattern. This is a bullish Gartley. And it's it's an X, A, B, C, D wave. It's a five-point wave that basically implies that the mo momentum coming down from the sell-off is now changing. You know, it's reversing. It's going from, you know, a sell-off. The bulls are getting in charge. The momentum starting to shift upward. And one of the other things I like to look for is, you know, on the MACD, we've got the same thing. You've got bullish divergence down here, less negative momentum, um, pulling this asset down. But at the same time, you are making lower prices, which means the bears are losing control and the momentum is about to shift upward. Um, mm -hmm. It's the same thing on the RSI here on the four hour chart. This is hidden bullish divergence between these two points. And that's basically a bullish continuation pattern. It's saying that, you know, the bull, this, you know, between this point here and this point here, this trend upwards is going to continue. Not as strong as the bullish divergence, but it's a continuation pattern all the same. Um, so my idea here with this trade, again, it's not advice. It's just something I'm seeing in the charts, you know, it could easily fail, but Generally speaking, these Gartley patterns are very powerful. Um, and if we look back here to the left on GME, every time we get above this inflection point, what happens? Right here, boom, all the way up here to 345. Back here, same thing. You got a nice candle close on the four hour here, up to 345. What's that, uh, what's that price range there uh, for that inflection? Uh, it, I think we're about between 143 and 157 anything above one 157 is going to be bullish look i mean if you look what happens same thing over here you get above this point you back test it as support and the price rallies up every time you get above this point and back test it as support you go up and all these things combined is telling me that you know 
you're very well going to see a run um, from this asset here. And historically speaking, this is what it does. These ranges here at 345, 281. And, you know, if you want to be conservative down here at 225, this would be the target of the harmonic specifically. Um, usually you want to target the A and the C points. Um, that's something I learned from Casey Stubbs. Shout out to Casey Stubbs on Twitter. Um, but, I mean, this is what I would be targeting. You know, this could very well fail, but it's a low risk area because you're down at the bottom of the range. You know, once you get up here, you, you, you lose that edge. You know, down here, if it stops you out, it happens. You know, these trades are all th about three to one. So, you know, I could take this trade three times. And if I get it right once, I'm going to be profitable. And that's kind of, you know, part of the strategy, too. You know, I, I, I don't expect anything ever from a trade. You never can. Stuff happens. But if you have all these variables giving you an edge greater than 50 percent and your trades are three to one, you end up being su successful in the end, even if, you know, you, all you got to do is hit 30 percent. And, you know, with all these other variables, you have a much greater odds of doing that. Love it. Love it. I mean, at the end of the day, I always talk about that same thing, right? I mean, you got to understand sure. what your profit to loss ratio is yep. and how that's going to affect your probability. Once you have that in mind, I mean, it, it really starts taking away the the feeling of I need to be right or or no. was I wrong on the trade? No, I mean, you weren't wrong. I mean, you got to get out of the emotion. Exactly. Yeah. It's, Make it's it robotic. Just, it's about and, seeing the charts. You know, one thing that I, I want to point sure. out here is that you, so you guys see his charts, right? They're, they're very intricate. You're seeing a lot of indicators kind of here. You're seeing some different things, but look how, like I, I have, I have a chart here a little bit more simple. I, I sometimes go a little more complicated, but very similar levels that we're paying attention to oh, very yeah. similar downtrend that I noticed and very similar levels that we're seeing that reversal action. What's right. happening also same thing I'm looking at. RSI starting to reverse there, coming off the lows, starting to cross on over. The ADX starting to cross on over also. I mean, it, and, and what that shows you is that, you know, technicals show up to a lot of traders out there. And when a lot of traders are starting to see the same thing, that's when the psychology really starts coming into play, right? Trading Nomadic? Oh, yeah. And you, you could see if you look on. This is, you know, this is scalper territory on the 30 minute chart here. But look, the same pattern on these lower time frame charts is telling you the same thing. Everything I just showed you on the four hour chart. Now you got confirmation that it's already happening. It's already starting to come up. You're getting a little bit of a curve here. And the reason why I like this one is because of the momentum that's always behind this stock. You of all people know this one's got a story to it. And yep. If you got a good looking chart with a good looking story and a lot of, um, you know, other uh, other things that you could tie in with that, like on these lower time frame charts, you're getting a reaction. This is a money flow indicator. You see, you kind of got this curving upward. And then when you get the cross, that's when you get a lot of bullish action. Um, and that's what you're starting to see on the lower time frames. And once you start to get the waterfall effect of other traders, like you said, having the same ideas, having the same thing, that's when technical analysis comes into play. Because when people are targeting, that's the stuff they're going to look at. You know, exactly, they're going to look yeah. at, hey, where is this stock been? Well, it keeps going back here to 281 often. Same thing up here. You got all these different touches. And it's, it's funny because we've got AMC doing the same thing and i know that's a crowd favorite yep. same thing same right? thing got the sell off this falling wedge bullish consolidation broke out of there you haven't done much but what you've got is this large reversal pattern that trapped the bear or the bulls here you come back down the bears get excited and then you trap them too and then you go up you kind of shake everybody out because if if you get people scared at the bottom they're going to buy in higher because they see it go up. Now they want to buy. It's market yeah. psychology. 
Hundred um, percent. I actually got stopped out early on Monday <laughs> on, on that AMC. Same mentality, right? It, um, I did get stopped out because I mean the market blew through my level, but sure. that doesn't mean what what did I clearly state also on that tweet? I said I'd be looking for re-entry confirmation. There you go. Looking for that level to get reclaimed, and then looking for the bullish momentum to come into the name, and then I could get it back in it. And that's what it's all about right. too. Is you can get out of the trade. You don't see it going in your direction in that timing that sometimes I put like a really short time frame on when I want to see sure. that positive reaction. And if I have a clear level of support, I can get out and get back in, oh, especially yeah. in a non-commission time frame. Like we you trade always... now with with no commissions. There's right. no, there's no right. problem with getting out of the trades. I, I see a lot of traders still suffering with that mentality. Well, it's my, my outlook on that is if you get stopped out because your plan didn't go how it was supposed to, well, now you can sit back. You don't, you're not taking losses. You're not getting emotional. You know, you, have you ever been the guy sitting there, you know, you were going to get out here, but you just let it go a little bit further. Oh, I'll get it when it hits the bottom and it just keeps on going, just keeps on going. And you have no plan. You know, you're just kind of winging it. You're getting emotional. It's going to affect your decisions. You know, that's, you know, people talk about FUD and, you know, the fear of uncertainty and doubt. And that's what happens. It's a real thing. The same thing with FOMO, especially if you just got FUDed out at the bottom mm -hmm. and then you see it go nuts, you know, right afterwards, then you're going to get hit with both. And that's, that's a dangerous thing because if you, you know, say you get out at the bottom and then you buy when it goes up. Well, guess what? What if it goes back down a little bit and gives you one of these, you know, gives you this little X, A, B, C, D wave that shakes you out and then goes nuts again. But you get, you know, you see, it's, you always got to have a plan. And the first thing I do is find out how much could I lose if I take this trade and it doesn't work um, because that's important. It's, it's, I would say that's more important than, you know, looking at how much you're going to make because, it, as long as you got money in your trading account, you're going to be okay. If you blow up your account, not, you know, not having a plan or letting stuff like that really get to you, it's, you, you can't trade anymore, right? Definitely. I always say protect the <clears throat> mental capital also, you know, uh, sure. often, you know, in times when we were going through earlier in this week, when the spy has a lot of uncertainty and you don't know where you're going, what can happen is you end up getting stopped out of so many trades that when the trend actually comes back to favor, you just don't have the mental capacity to be right. into the trade. Because then, you know, your bad decisions are now making you afraid to take your good decisions. And exactly. that, that's happened with, to me a couple times recently, you know, and it's, it's sometimes you just got to step back before you make it. And that's why it's nice to be stopped out because you have a You have a minute. You're like, all right, my trade failed. I can you're not panicking. You're out. If you took a loss, you took a loss. But, you know, trades fail. Stuff happens that can't be a, ch a chart is never going to tell you if all of a sudden, you know, there's going to be a short report released on a stock that you're in long. And, you know, it's that's why you always you always stop out. Sometimes it bites you. Sometimes it saves you. But I'd rather be saved. Hey, you know. well, well, one thing I have to say. Thank you for sending me that chart because that's what I always love. I always love when people send me their ideas, their story, because sure. I, I, I'm one of those traders that I always feel that you can get an idea from someone else, then do your own analysis and create right. an opinion about that. There's, they, they did half the, you did half the work for me. So right. at that point, I'm just going to go ahead and check out the level, see if I see the same thing. And that's what traders, I think, get into a problem where it's like, Oh, I want to be like Trading Nomadic, but you don't need to be like him. You need to learn from him it's and how he's approaching you it. Share the ideas and you, you That's analyze what this is all it about. on your own. You, you got to understand what's happening, you know, on these charts. And at the same time, this is, you know, when I post something like this, it's just an idea. Like you said, take a look at the levels, wait, figure out how you want to approach, you know, the idea that I have, or, you know, see if it makes sense to you. Love you know, it. 
Love it. I, uh, we'll definitely bring you back, Trading Nomadic. I appreciate, appreciate it, you brother. bringing me that chart. And I hope that you guys out there appreciate it, Trading Nomadic, coming on and bringing it on to us right here on Live Trading with Benzinga. Go ahead and smash the like. If Where, where could they find you, Trading Nomadic? They want to follow maybe your tweets or, or, or right kind of follow? Right on Twitter is probably the best place. It's Trade Nomadic on Twitter. Um, and I, I post stuff like this all the time. And again, it's not trading advice. It's just ideas. Exactly. Know? Take it for what it's worth. It's the chart always tells you a story and you know, you got, you got to make sure it makes sense to you as well. Exactly. And I appreciate you guys, man. Thanks for having me. Like always. All right, guys, that's going to probably do it for us on live trading. Up next, we're going to talk about some D SPACs in the SPAC game. SPACs attack is coming on next. I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. I'll go ahead and I'll try to start that up a little bit early. We should be starting up at 10.55. I'm going to go ahead and get ready with Chris Ketchy. Like always, you guys can check it out. Chrisopedia is going to have some information for me, like always. But right here on Benzinga TV, Next week, we got the Cannabis Conference. I definitely want you guys to check that out. If you haven't already, we need to meet the top cannabis stocks. You want to learn about investing in cannabis? This is the perfect event for you.